show their links here and that's right, day after day we are jumping into Team Anthem games, one after the other, absolutely going to do that. Today we are starting Once Lonesome Tooth Company, which I do believe will take us at least two episodes. But yes, let's check it out. Hey, how many friends do we have to beat you up for to understand? Another hefty punch lands on my face. And yes, this was the game where I was saying that it has the character which I definitely dig from the looks. You have her right here. The fatigue of my damaged body makes me lose balance and my legs give out. She then stomps her foot onto my arm and looks down upon me. Are we your friends, huh? Will you borrow 50,000 yen for whatever you need that much money for and you still haven't paid us back? Oh boy, that's... okay, first of all, I... I myself don't like borrowing money at all. Second of all, even if I would borrow, I would give it back pretty fast. Also, how much is 50,000 yen? <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. Pretty much. If I do say so myself. Um... I don't know what she needed this for, amount for, to be honest, but, well. What kind of friend are you? The other girls start cackling along with her, something like horse crows. It hurts my ears. Friends don't... <clears throat> Friends don't hold on to the depths. No, 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 wrong voice. Friends don't hold on to the depths. I whisper under my breath, but the alloy is just quite enough that my sassy comment was heard. The foot of my arm releases and kicks my face. Oh, come on. That's so low. Hard. I have no energy left to even cry out in pain. You're the idiot. If it were just a few hundred yen, sure, but this is 50,000 yen we're talking about. We pulled it out of our rust just because you said you need help. What do you even use that money on our way? Probably drugs. Damn, or link with druggy, even they wouldn't stood that low. My ears are ringing and my head is spinning. The metallic taste in my mouth that I'm so used to makes me want to vomit. My entire body is numb. I lie there ignoring every word they say and hope they just leave me. I hate everything. Remember we're gonna be on your tail till you give us back that 50,000 yen! Don't treat us like idiots, we're not going to forget about the money. I suggest you go find some way to get easy money, I can already think of one. <laughs> They leer at each other and their screeching laughter pierces my ears again. Also, are we in a skirt? Easy money, huh? With one last kick in my stomach, they finally leave my soon-to-be carcass alone. Oh boy. I lonely the floor of the dirty alleyway, where no light shines upon. I think back to what I did with that money that brought me to my fate now. If I only use that money on myself. It was for my parents and their gambling addiction. Oh, fuck. That sucks. Imagine having to, like, pay off your parents' debts or whatever. Oh, that sucks. A dump risk that I took and a dump trap I fell into, hoping they would win something with that money. That, oh. Don't do something like that. I mean, addicts never win. I don't know what I was thinking, but I didn't think I'd end up in this kind of situation. No one will save me. No one has. I stare at the brick wall in front of me, waiting my death. If only... If only that happened. My eyelids slowly close as the darkness engulfs me. I soon fall into a slumber, but my eyes shoot open when I hear footsteps running towards me. My heartbeat pounds in my chest from fear. Are they back to bully me again? That's hardly bullying. They beat you up. That's even worse. <laughs> Excuse me, are you alright? A panicked voice unlike the previous girls echoes through the tight walls of the alley. My eyes roll up to see who the unfamiliar voice belongs to, but my eyes do too clouded with tears to clearly see who it could be. Ah, 
what do I do? What do I do? Her voice slowly tunes out as I fall into unconsciousness. Could it be that an angel has finally come to take me to heaven? No, I wouldn't be going to heaven. Dude, it's 8 degrees outside, what the heck, it's warm as hell. I need to open a window, give me like 5 seconds. I probably belong in hell. Or maybe not. I open my eyes after what seems like eons, but the bright light above forces my eyes to squint. Is this a hospital? Doesn't look like one, looks too good. Once my eyes... <laughs> Cute plasters! Adjust to the light, I scan around the room to see where I am. I turn my head to the right and see a little desk, as well as a window. I assume it's already nightfall, with the window looking dark outside. Just where am I? I decide to get up, but I instantly regret the decision. My entire body ages and everywhere hurts. I scowl in pain as I try to push myself up from the bed and notice that I'm bandaged up. I hiss continuously until the door opens up and someone comes running towards me. What are you doing? A girl puts the tray she was holding onto the bedside table and holds on to me. It feels much better without having to support my own wave. I fall to her hands and lie down once again. Please be careful, you shouldn't be getting up this, in this state. The soft pillow greets my head and I gladly accept its greeting. I take a better look at the girl and notice her wearing my school's uniform. Mm, the same school? Nice. Judging by the color of, the, of her bow, she's a first year. Interesting. She looks incredibly prim and proper, what with her uniform neatly camped. Her big round teal eyes that sit prettily on her face are filled with worry. Just what happened to you? Before that I should be asking who are you instead? A shocked expression replaces her previous concerned face. Oh! Hey, I'm Nekota Hibiki! I attend Higashi Taka! Hi! First year I transferred in! I cut her off before she goes on a tongue and I don't care about. Why did you save me? Hey? Why did you just leave me there in the alley? You could have just went about your day without having to deal with this trouble of helping me. I couldn't have just left you there. You were basically on your last breath. Yeah, exactly. Should have just left me there. She gave me a scorned look. The guilt would have eaten at me if I didn't. Uh, she's one of those people. I take a big sigh and let it go. I guess I do owe her for saving my life, even if I didn't really want it. It's not often that I say thanks, but just this once. <sighs> thanks. I look away to the opposite wall and mutter a quiet gratitude. Oh, she's blushing! As one would say. Even without turning back her face, I can see a gleaming smile appearing. <laughs> oh yeah! I turn my head to my previous position after her exclamation, which actually hurt a bit. I'm not surprised if I got whiplash. I try my best to wipe the blood off you and bandage you, for I haven't really done it before, so let me know if it feels tighter and comfortable anywhere. I take another more clearer look at the bandages around my hands. It's not like I feel anything aside from the pain away. I can tell if it feels uncomfortable or not. It's fine. That's good to hear! She reaches for the train next to me and grabs the bowl on it. I also made you some rice, rice porridge. You probably can't eat that much right now, but it's better to have at least something in your stomach than nothing. Now that she mentions it, just when was the last time I ate? I rack my brain to the events pure through the beating. I don't think I ate since this morning's piece of toast. Just the thought of being able to eat something makes my stomach grumble like thunder. Hibiki hears the ungodly sound and chuckles. <laughs> Heat soon surges into my face, and I probably look like a tomato right now. Here, let me help you sit up to eat. I'll try to be as gentle as I can. Getting up for help feels so much easier than doing it alone. 
He big props the pillow vertically for my back to rest on and gently. Let's go. Never have ever been treated this royal before, and I don't think I want to live this moment. Whether this is all just a dream or reality, I want to savor this taste of royalty. I start to leave my aging hands to receive the ball from her, but instead I'm told to open my mouth. Say ah! The unexpected words cause me to feel taken aback. I kind of understand that. I want to be treated like majesty, not a baby. On second thought, I'll just do things myself. Uh, I, uh, I'll just eat myself, you don't need to feed me like that. Lifting my hands up doesn't hurt that much until I begin to lift my arms. I wince the pain and remember the heavy toll my arms took from receiving countless hits and kicks. He big judgingly looks down at my arms and looks back at me in Are you sure about that? manner. I bite my lips in remorse, knowing she's 100% right. Unfortunately, I'm not invincible. It's okay. I can deal with the pain. No, thank you. I don't want to spill everything because your arms are literal noodles right now. You'll just end up creating more work for me. She managed to take another job at me. Just sit there quietly and eat. You're a patient in my care right now. Now say ah. And more like, uh, I want to bury my face in the pillow, how embarrassing. Nonetheless, I bleach and finally taste the delicious spoonful of heaven. Maybe it's because I didn't have food today, but even just the flavor of ripe por rice porridge manages to bring a li all life back to me. My eyes widen her to signal that this is the best dish I've eaten. Who made this? This tastes so good! Big grins in satisfaction. I did it! I'm glad you like it! I didn't have many ingredients tonight, but I tried my best to make something good. I was afraid you might not like it since it's so simple. I only shake my head to disagree. You made this! I thought it was your mom or something. It's simple dish, but I did this every day. Now it's Hibby's turn to blush as she shies away from my compliment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my mom's not here anymore. And my dad's always. There was a slight pause that was quick, but he's stunned enough to notice. Busy, so he's not home often. I had to learn how to cook unless I want to live my life of convenience store bento boxes. Which is not bad as well, I guess, but hey. It's always nicer to have like a fully cooked dish. True. Shoot accidentally stepped on a landmine that I didn't see coming at all by mentioning her already passed mom. Oh. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to bring it up. Oh no, it's totally fine. She died giving birth to me, so I have no memories of her or anything. Ugh. Hmm. That's tough. Hmm. That's very tough. Just imagine the amount of pressure on father as well. Or even though if the way, you know, roles were reversed kind of, let's say it was that father who would be dead. Of course not by giving birth, we know, when giving birth. There must have been a different reason for that, obviously. Because we know biology. Uh, it would be tough for mother then, right? Basically, out of two parents, mother, father, if one of them dies, the other is in, well, a really, really tough spot, right? Anyway, let's go. My fingers subconsciously fidget with the blanket, knowing that I made things a bit awkward. It's totally okay. I've had caretakers that that hired throughout my younger life. It was like I had multiple moms. <laughs> uh, okay, so she's rich. <laughs> Never mind what I... Actually, no. You know what? It would still be tough for the father here. Come on. My throat struggles to find some kind of consoling words for her, but I just can't. So I leave the air silent instead. I'd rather not make that smear even more awkward. Hurry and deep before it gets cold. Actually, no, it's not picking from the uh, headphones. 
Oh, the music is so loud in my headphones, actually. Uh, poo -poo! I proceed to eat the rest, and my stomach has probably never thanked me enough for putting real food into it. She puts the bowl back on the tray and carries it out of the door. The dark side outside the window catches my attention again. I speak up before she disappears from the room. I haven't realized how long I was out for and have no idea what the time is. Hey, what time is it? Hey, oh yeah, it's probably around 9 by now. Jeez, I was out for a good 5 hours? Yep, yeah, pretty much. You were snoring pretty loudly, dude. No doubt you were tired. Get what the hell? What? How does a complete stranger I just met for the first time get to see all my vulnerable and embarrassing signs in just one day? Nice. I swear I've blushed more today than I have in my lifetime. I hate it. I'm gonna go home. Uh, thanks again for his hospitality. She runs back to me and holds me down. Oh, no, 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 where do you think you're going in this condition? You obviously can barely move. I feel great. I push her aside with my regained strength, for it still isn't much. I need to get going. My legs don't hurt as much as I thought it would hurt to walk. Or maybe I'm just used to the pain and recovery. Why don't you stay the night? I don't even know. I don't even know you. Why would I stay at a stranger's house? But how are you going to get home in that state? I will, don't worry about it. I think it's better if you stay, even just for the tonight, for good measure. Show me the exit. He big stands still looking at me with disdain and then looks down the floor looking rejected. <laughs> Alright. Whoa. Damn. Can I move in? <laughs> she leads me out of what I presume is the guest room and through the big and chic looking house of hers. I can't help but take a peek around the space. It's quite a modern looking place with high ceilings and sleek looking furniture. The lack of clutter creates a minimalist visual, like something out of a brochure for a new house. The house isn't lavishly furnished, which further emphasizes the thought that she's home alone most of the time. It doesn't look too shabby for her, so she's probably well off in terms of finance. Well, I mean, look at the house. However, the size of it makes me wonder if she really lives here all by herself. The entrance opens up and I meet the chilly air of late autumn. Ugh. Why do school uniforms require skirts? If you go straight down that path and turn right, you'll see a big mannequin echo. Take a left to walk a bit and you'll see the station if you need it. Mm. With soft note, I take off and start my trek back to my own place. I shove my hands deeper in the pockets of my cardigan and even pull my skirt a bit lower to defend myself from the breeze. At least the train is warm inside. I want to fall asleep on the train and let it take me elsewhere, but after that 5 hour nap I'm wide awake. When the dull lights in the train hurt my eyes after a dark walk in the streets. I close my eyes and attempt to fall asleep and block the light, but the name of my stop is called before I can nod off. The cold air clings to me once again through my journey back to my own house. My apartment is only a 10 minute walk from the station but it feels like aeons with a busted body. Going up the stairs adds another 3 decades to my trip. Each muscle ages as I take each step. Once I reach the final step I quickly raffle through my bags for my keys, all the while briskly walking towards the correct door. All I want is the hot water of the showers. The door swings inward slowly and I step into the only building that feels no different than what the outside feels like. I'm home. Only silence greets me. I kick my shoes off and turn on the lights in the place. Also nice place, I mean overall. I start the empty living room, a scene I'm a bit too accustomed to. Maybe she'll take on that chic's offer. Then I trudge slowly to my room to get ready for a shower, but after lying down on my bed for a minute's rest, I end up falling into a deep sleep instead. Hmm. That's a nice room now. Damn. I wake to the song of birds accompanied by the warmth of sunshine blanketing my room. 
The realization just hit that I passed out last night unexpectedly and I groaned at myself for doing so, especially in such an awkward position. I slowly get up, rubbing my sleep from my eyes. I look around for my back and find it sprawled on the floor. As I reach for it, my body aches once more, still reeling in pain after my recent encounter. I rummage through my back to find my phone and I check the time. 10.50 am. Oh. Seems I've slept in. Whatever. I start stripping out my dirty clothes and start removing the bandage wraps the girl gave me. I toss the bloody bandage into the garbage bin on the way out and head for the showers. There's no point going back to school during lunchtime since I'll just sit there and sleep for the remaining time anyway. Shit. That math test is today before lunch, isn't it? Piss me off, could have been able to stay home till after lunch. To be fair, I did miss some tests like that. Like, you know, I slept too long or whatever. In the morning, I would, I would sometimes go later, basically. Into the day. I mean, it was middle, middle school fall, but they would allow me to do that like that. Anyway, piss me off. Could have been able to stay home till after lunch. I'll shower and bath until maybe when fourth period starts and do that math test. Guess I just have to sleep through lunch. I put the hot water on, full blast, and relax instantly when the scorching shower pelts my skin. I begin to scrub my entire body from yesterday's filth. I couldn't care less which muscles ache and what bruises hurt. My tangled hair challenges me to a duel, but it's nothing hair conditioner can conditioner can save. As I finish rinsing the conditioner out, thoughts of yesterday flash into my mind. Any day could be another day where I get beat up again in a pulp. And who knows what they are capable of doing next time instead of just throwing punches and kicks. Getting hurt doesn't face me, but knowing them I can foresee something in them more sinister. After all, I did treat them like airheads, trying to get away with not paying back the money and all. Despite the hot water, the dark thoughts caused me to shiver. I shake my head to get my mind back together and shut the shower head off. The burning water might have already melted my brain a bit. I don't usually think too deep about things. Same. I step out of the tub while wringing the water out of my hair, which becomes another strangle. Perhaps I should get a haircut soon. The water droplets on my feet form a trail from the shower to a boat to my abode across the corridor. Hmm. The once dry bath towel easily gets drenched as I wipe my body. With towel hanging on my head, I go to my closet and grab my spare uniform for the day. Is it the same or different now? I'm curious. Maybe she has a different option as well, right? Given. For wait. Do they have different uniforms for first years, second years, and so on? Hmm. Now to think about it, the girl from yesterday probably didn't recognize me as a student from her school because the cardigan I wear isn't distributed by the school. What was her name again? Neko, Neko, Neko. Hey? Neko? Disregarding the thought of trying to remember her name, I swiftly dress myself and attempt to dry my hair. Obviously, drying my lion's mane didn't go too well. With my hair still half wet, I bust out of the house and leave for school, determined to take that math test. I have no future, but I at least want to maintain my grades somewhat. Don't think like that. I would say... Alright, there's the lunch bell, time's up! Hand in your test, please! Students groan and wail in protest, demanding more time, all the while knowing they can't have any more. I on the other hand instantly drop my head on my desk and close my eyes. I want to say I did okay on the test, but there were definitely some that caught me off guard. I expected of a hard knock teacher. Her she was in cahoots with another teacher here. <laughs> now that lunch has started, the students soon disperse to their cliques and groups. The lull of their conversation in the classroom slowly drifts me off to sleep. It's better that I sleep anyway, the sound of others e eating aggravates my stomach. Another option would be to nap somewhere quiet, but it's safer here. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't want to beat someone up in front of crowd. One more second and that would have sent me to dreamland, but a high-pitched voice that's old familiar resonates through the classroom from the hall. Ah, it's you! 
I grudgingly raise my head and look in the direction of said voice. There she is, speed walking the classroom to me with a humongous gleam on her face and a bent on her hands. I still haven't recalled her name. I didn't know you were from this school. This school doesn't have this cardigan. I have no choice but to talk to her. Uh, yeah, it's my own. The school doesn't really care anyway. What a small world, huh? To think I drowned to again, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Who would have thought? I give short responses in hopes of giving her a hint that I don't really want her company right now, but I don't think she gets it. All eyes are on her, but her eye but eyes aren't the only thing that she's attracted. Behind her shining face I can hear multiple murmurs passing around. Isn't it Nekota Hibiki? The Yakuza daughter they transferred recently? <laughs> what? Ah, Nekoda Hibiki, that was her name. I think so, what she's doing here? Don't look this way, don't look this way! I heard her Yakuza dad will ruin your family if she says even one word about being picked on. Yeah, don't want to go near that, didn't we also hear she might be in some shady business as well? I make eye contact with her again and on this, she's looking around nervously, potentially into all the whispering. <laughs> Who would have expected something like that, dude? God, definitely not me here. Hey, wait, she looks so helpless right now. We're getting out of here. Ah! I grab her wrist and drag her out of the hell hole. Even if I felt annoyed hearing those comments. I take her to the one place, only place I know where we can talk quietly. Wait, where are we going? The rooftop. The roof? That's off limits, isn't it? Not for me. My hands feel clammy. I might have gotten myself into something I shouldn't have. Assuming those rumors in the classroom were true. We reach the top of the dark staircase that leads to the door of the rooftop. Only the light coming through the door's window illuminates the area. I look back to her, at her to see her worried expression. I give her a rushing smirk and open the door, exposing us to the crisp autumn air. Hey. The sun helps warm us from the slight breeze, and God am I thankful for that. I close the door behind us gently and guide her to the center of the roof, so roof stage. I expected this to be said rooftop. Now we can talk without any interruptions, and you can eat your lunch in peace. She marvels at the center in front of us and praises me for knowing such a place. I can't believe you! I smugly shrug, aware that I'm great for granting her access to this unknown area. Unfortunately, there aren't any chairs or comfortable seating, but I sit down in the middle of the vast roof and look out into the distance. He big sits by me while her eyes are still glued to the breathtaking sight beyond the fence. Are you sure we're supposed to be here? Nope. But no one checks. I've never gotten caught yet, so it's all good. Yet? Just eat your lunch, will you? She gives me one more skeptical look and opens her bento to reveal a scrumptious lunch. <sighs> the lunch consists of rice with a side of egg rolls, octopus winners and broccoli for veggies. Memories surge back to me, as I remember she's actually a good cook. <sighs> Knowing my stomach's going to grumble again, I divert my gaze away and think about something else. The muffled conversations and various sounds below us are all I focus on, along with the birds that fly by us. I'm about to lie down to bask in the warm sunlight, but suddenly I'm interrupted by Hibiki. Would you like to have some? Hey. Some of my lunch, I assume you haven't had lunch yet. Looking over again, the tasty bento box tempts me to accept the offer, but at the same time I don't want to impose on her. I don't want to eat, I'm good. You can't just not eat! I remember yesterday your stomach was grounding because you probably didn't even eat for the entire day, you have to eat properly, you know, come on! She picks up one of the octopus winner with her chopsticks and points it to my mouth. I freeze in a place as I debate with my inner self. Do I fall into the hands of gluttony or resist? Gluttony it is! Hippie lowers top cheeks with a glum uh, look on her face. Good. 
Could it be you're afraid of me? My eyebrows furrow in confusion. What is she going on about this time? I'm sure you heard those people in the classroom. Ah, that. There are rumors spreading around about random things. Some really are true, but it's true that my dad is a Yakuza, my dad is a Yakuza member. Huh. Again, I'm at a loss for words. It's definitely intimidating that her dad's a Yakuza member. Who knows what they're capable of doing if do if I do one thing wrong to Hibiki. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't afraid of that. Dude, right now you could like try imagining myself with some dark lit room. A freaking cup with whiskey in hand. Detective's hat. General, in general actually like detective's outfit. So what kind of business do you have with me? What seems to trouble you? Why do you seek the help of this detective? No, literally this is a detective's music, come on. Detective's game, perfect for it. Anywho, did I read that? Hey, but I think not. But Hibiki seems like time to get along with anybody. Hell, she saved me when she could have just walk past and pretended like she didn't see anything. That already says a lot about her caring personality. To keep my cool facade, I lean back with my arms and stare at the sky. Hmm, I don't like rumors and gossip. Whether they're true or not, I don't really care. You saved me. That's enough for you to be on my good side. But they're true! My dad's actually a Yakuza member! Eh. She looks down at her lunch. That's why no one's ever come close to me. No one there... Uh, sorry. That's why no one's ever come close to me! No one there's to befriend me because they fear me! A wave of silence washes over us, leaving us with only the sounds of the various city noises. Well, it is also true that your dad will bring hell on earth if any friend is gonna do you wrong. No! This is not true for sure! I can deal with my own problems! I don't need my dad to beat up on the bullies or whatever! I'm not a kid anymore! Wait. So you're saying it's happened before when you were a kid? That question is honestly meant to be both junk and a serious question. No! Well, maybe! But what? But that was only because I was young! My dad knows! I can handle things myself now! Then it's fine. They aren't worth being a friend if they're scared of that. Well, it's a given that they would be if they are not your... F if they are your friends, they won't be... They won't really be hurting you much, right? They're being friends because they like you as a person. Friends that won't hurt you so much, huh? Sounds familiar. For I never really treated them as friends. Just a group I hang out with to avoid looking like a loner. Is this what they call karma? If they won't be your friend, I'll be your friend. To be honest, I just said that out of the blue because she seems so dumb, but I don't think having any friend would hurt, especially not this little lost kitten. After hearing that statement, her eyes whine to size that I didn't know both round eyes could go. <laughs> Tears were soon forming and I feel like I made a hasty decision. Uh oh. You don't have to cry over that. <laughs> Sorry! Her sleeves become tissues as she wipes the tears in her eyes. It's like you've never had a friend in your life. She digs into her now probably cold lunch. I've had friends, just just not long-lasting ones. I certainly don't have any now. You have me now. Hmm. Right, but why do I have the feeling you're only playing around with me? Hey, I don't go joking around when it comes to making friends. I don't make friends that easily, so be grateful about me being yours. So what you're saying is you yourself suck at making friends? I should her a death glare, but I admit that that's 100% true. Hibiki chuckles a surprisingly cute chuckle. Her laugh catches me off guard completely and brings me to notice her appearance. Now that I look at her closely, she's actually really pretty. She looks like one of those girls that all the boys try to go for, or those popular and well-liked girls. Well, I like the one on the right for. 
I'm the weirdo, okay? Maybe she'd be if it weren't for those nasty rumors. Speaking of which, since we're now friends, it's best if I clear up all rumors, right? So, about that rumor about you being in some shady business. She shuts me down the second I finish my sentence. False! I'm a perfectly normal girl, my dad tries his best to make that happen. He tries to keep his Yakuza identity a secret when he's around me to protect me from a bad life. These rumors just somehow happen to spread. I think it's been enough about all of this. I decided to drop it and stop caring about all those seemingly false allegations. Alright, alright. As long as you don't send Yakuza members to come murder me, it's all cool. <sighs> I get my last words cut off when an egg rolled inserts into my mouth mid-sentence. <laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> Would you... That's not going to happen. With a stern and annoying look, she resumes her meal. The egg rolls soft folds are cooked to perfection, not too overly done yet, not too soggy. It managed to shut me up for a good minute while I chew my first meal of the day. What seems to keep you quiet? I just haven't eaten anything today yet. I'm trying to savor the taste. Her signature concerned look is showing again. You really not hate anything. You're not getting your attention. I don't answer her question. She most likely knows the answer anyway. I just don't have the time nor skill to make good food like she does. I can do whatever I want. A sigh escapes her mouth, and thankfully she gives up questioning my life choices. Here, have the rest of my lunch. As much. Wait, stop, 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 stop. Here, have the rest of my lunch! As much as I'd like to, I feel like a hobo doing so. No, no, just finish it. You didn't have lunch! I had that egg roll. That's nothing! It's something to me. I shrug and stand up, getting ready to flee because I don't want to keep up with this farce. Also a good idea to get food away from my eyes. Well, it was nice talking to ya, see ya! I leave the confused and stunned girl on the floor and to her lonesome. Wait! I... It feels so beautiful for her to feed me like that and I don't quite like that, even if her food is exceptional. I look back at her with a smack smirk before I open the door to voice my victory when she returns with a defeated, unamused face. Somehow, and for some reason, I escape her once more. The rest of my day goes back to my regularly scheduled programming. Just the good old boring class my stealthy retreat from me getting beat up. But with Miss Yakuza daughter as a new friend, my daily life has been spiced up a bit. A bit? Yeah! <laughs> Just a little bit! You know what, let's, uh, let's cut it right here. And of course, we'll continue tomorrow. This is absolutely adorable. I love it. I mean, maybe not the beating up part and having to run away and having parents who are gambling addicts. Oh boy. That's some background. And then you basically befriend someone who has a father of a Yakuza. Cute. Her life will never probably be devoid of boredom. <laughs> Unfortunately, in some moments, uh, definitely not in a good way. Especially those parents of hers, they are a problem. Anyway, uh, two lovely girls. As I already said, actually we are the character that I, well, prefer visualize I absolutely adore characters like that for for some reason as well well I like a lot of characters in general right a lot of various designs I would say but uh, yeah this type absolutely huge yes anywho we'll see where this exactly goes uh, if our our girl will have encounters with those that beat her up before Hmm, maybe we'll get help from the new friend's father to deal with them. That would be nice. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Let's not theorize too more. There is too more, too much. We'll see exactly.
within the next episode or two. Who knows? I actually don't know how many episodes it would take. We'll see. For now, for hope you all enjoyed. Consider liking the video if you did. That's always appreciated and helps the channel a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already. That's also super helpful. We're under to two and a, two, two and a half thousand now. Which unfortunately after December definitely will slow down as always. Uh, what else? You can tell me so far from this, I don't know, 50 minutes. E which of the girls is to your preference as well? I would like to know that. And after that, if you are into stuff like Twitch with Instagram, you can go there and follow me there. And yeah, that's it. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.